So it's been quite a while since I've done a build on this channel, at least a video, not so much live streams because I've been doing a lot of those recently. But in 2024, I kind of want to branch out into more 60%, 70%, 80% boards. And I kind of did this around Christmas time with the 108 and the 61. But we're going to be building today, and now bear with me on this, and I want to try to get this right. But we're going to be building a 63 key, split monoblock, ergonomic, column staggered, ortholinear, hand-wired, wireless, mechanical keyboard. So there's a lot there to digest. So let's just dive in and we'll start building it. All right, this here is the Scotto 63. It's called the 63 because there are 63 total keys on this board here. So very unique naming, I know. But it is a split monoblock, meaning there are two split halves here, but a monoblock design, meaning just one board. And we're gonna be mounting a nice nano in the middle here. And then there is this battery underneath, which is going to be this very nice 750 milliamp hour battery which will give us about like eight months on a single charge if it never goes to sleep or if it does go to sleep i have to look at my stats on that for exactly what that is but very big battery which will last a long time with zmk firmware that will mount right in there and then we'll just connect it to the controller up here but the first thing i have to do to actually get this board started is i want to take my little pre-cut pin socket headers here and we have to get these flush mounted into the plate so i have these cutouts that i designed in my software and these will kind of flush mount in there like that but we're going to be using UV resin to hold them in so they don't pull out when you remove the controller. But they'll kind of sit in there like that. And then the controller can sit right on top. And it'll sit flush with the plate so you can see like that. And then the USB port will be accessible through that cutout I made there. So I'm going to do that really quick. And then I will be back after, which we'll talk about the switches. So there's the sockets mounted into the board. You can see that I basically just took UV resin, poured it on there so that it would flow in between the sockets and then just blast it with some UV light to solidify it. I love using UV resin. I actually use it now for my controllers on boards too instead of hot glue, which is nice, but they're all mounted in there. And if we flip this over, you can see that they're actually all flush here. So if I grab my controller, it won't catch on anything. So it's gonna mount really nice and flushly on there. And I'll show how that's done later in this video when I talk about actually mounting this to this. We're basically gonna use wire instead of like the normal parts you'd use to work with sockets. What we're gonna talk about next, of course, are these switches because these here are the switches I'm using. They're the Halo Halo switches from Dang Keebs. And they have a very nice, like they have different colors for the stems. They have a nice housing that I think will match the keycaps and they're just a linear switch. I think they'll sound and feel pretty nice. I don't know if they're pre-lubed. I haven't actually opened. Let me actually open one really quick. So if we grab my switch opener here and we just pop one open. Let's find out if these are pre-lubed. I think they might be. Let's see. Um, There goes a spring. And there goes the stem. Oh boy. I lost the stem in the <laughs> the bucket of switches. Um, Let's just, let's get that stem out here. My bad. Whoops. I don't know where it went. There it is. Okay. Let's find out if this is actually pre-lubed. It does not look like it is pre-lubed, which they feel pretty smooth for not being pre-lubed. So I'm gonna mount these in the board now. So now I have all these switches in the board here. And I think they look really good with the blue, the yellow, and the pink, so the different colors here. But I didn't mention that for this middle key here, we're gonna be, of course, using a stabilizer. That's a stabilizer cut out there. What I did for this is I actually just wholly modded a stabilizer, so just a direct to you. But we have our stabilizer here, which I modded before this video. I'm just gonna pop that in really quick. And then we'll take our switch, pop that in. And now at this point, the board is ready to start wiring up. So on boards like this, specifically column staggered. So column staggered, meaning that every column is offset. So you see it's a quarter unit higher, quarter unit lower here. It's easier to actually start with the rows and the diodes. So if I grab a row wire here, you can see that this is bent pretty crazily. It will kind of sit right there. And then we'll just kind of wire all the diodes and stuff to this because on the columns, these are just vertical, they run this way. So up and down, it's easier to get the heat shrink on these instead of this bent wire. So that's what I'm gonna do. And luckily before this video, I actually coiled up all these diodes. It took me probably about 15 minutes to do this. And I actually used something really cool for that. I used my diode coiling tool, which you can find on the repo if you wanna just build one yourself. Or you can also buy it on my website, you know, kind of a shameless plug there. I'll link that down below too. But you basically just put your diode in here, twist it around and makes really short work of getting some really consistent diodes. So I'm gonna go through now and I'm gonna actually wire up all these rows and then we'll be be back after to talk about the columns. So 
So there are the rows wired up. You see we have the diodes running to the row wires here. I do have to connect this piece to this one and this one to this one, but I'm just going to use a piece of wire to do that and we'll just kind of run it across and then we can run it to the controller there later with a wire. But one thing I wanted to mention here, and I kind of mentioned it before I think, but I've also mentioned in a lot of other videos is that going into this build, you probably saw that I had all my stuff prepared ahead of time. So like my wires were all pre-bent. I had all my diodes coiled and stuff and I keep a bunch extra on hand and going to the next step of the columns with the intersections. I also keep a bunch of heat shrink tubing. Now this is something I do where I keep a bunch of this to prepare it ahead of time. So if I need it during a build, I can just kind of grab it and use it instead of having to do it as I do a build, which would be a little bit more tedious because you're already doing something pretty tedious here. Why add an extra tedious step on top? So I recommend having like just little buckets all over of like coiled diodes and heat shrink tubing and copper wire. So like just pieces of copper that are pre straightened. So you just have them ready to go when you need them. And it just makes life a lot easier. So at this point, what we're ready to do though, is just take our board here, take our copper wires for the columns. We can mark the intersections, heat shrink them, and then we'll be ready to wire this up after I do all that. I did want to kind of show how these columns are done before we actually time lapse through it. But basically you take your column wire and you put it there and you mark off with a paint marker all the intersections. So here, 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 and then here. And you don't actually have to do the top one because we're just going to trim it short so it doesn't actually even risk connecting with that. And then basically all you do after that is grab this, you grab some of your heat shrink tubing, you put it on where those intersections are marked, you shrink it down and then you can solder it to the columns there. So I'm going to go through now and actually time lapse through this entire process. And then afterwards we'll be able to continue the build. So I'm going to do that now. There's the entire matrix all wired up. You can see that we have the columns all insulated nicely with these heat shrink tubings from the rows over here. But the one thing that's missing is that there is no controller on this right now. So what we're gonna do at this point is get ready to solder the controller on. And all we're gonna do for that is put this down. We're gonna grab our nice nano here, which you haven't seen. This is a nice nano. It has 21 GPIO pins, which is pretty important for this build because we need 20 pins. So the 21 on this is perfect. This build will only work with a nice nano. So they are a little pricey, but that's what I'm using for this. Then we're going to just take our controller, we're going to pop it on there, we're going to grab some, I believe this is 26 gauge wire, and basically go all around the controller and kind of socket it into the sockets with this, and kind of push it in there, and then we'll just kind of do that around the entire controller, solder those in place, and then we'll have a socketed controller that's perfect, we can pop it out or replace it if we need to. But the one thing I want to mention is that it's very important when soldering a nice nano to stay around 270 degrees Celsius, 270, 280-ish on your iron, because you could damage a chip if you go too hot and apply too much heat. So I'm just going to do that now, and then I'll be back after, in which we'll start assembling everything to the controller and get a functioning board. So you can see by socketing it the way I just did, everything looks really clean on here. It's really flush to the board like that, which is important when we grab our case over here and just pop this in, you can see that we have basically the perfect clearance for the charge port so we can actually charge our battery. So now that this is socketed, what's next is I want to actually partially assemble the case here. So I wanna get all the components on here, which will just make it a little bit easier to route all our cables when we wire up the controller. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna just mount everything to this so we have all our standoffs on it. Then we can wire everything up here after that. So all the hardware is now on the plate. We have all our standoffs here, some more standoffs here, which we'll talk about why they're standoffs above the controller later. But we have all our standoffs on here. And what I wanted to talk about really quickly was something I started doing recently, and that is this, where if I pull up my notebook, I have my entire layout or my entire matrix kind of laid out on a diagram here where I can see every single pin up here, all my row pins here. I can see which number they are on the matrix, so like caps lock is two zero or B is three five. So I can kind of see everything. I recommend you start doing this too if you're building a hand wired board. It just kind of helps and you can kind of like wire everything up before wiring it up. So I know where everything goes with the controller and that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna wire everything to the controller and then we'll flash the firmware and we'll have a working board. there is everything wired up to the board. I also even put on this little JST connector for the battery. So if I ever want to easily replace it, I can just do that by popping that off. Pretty simple there. I have the firmware on it. I tested it. It is all working. So what I'm going to do now is just assemble this into the case. I'm going to pop on the 750 milliamp hour battery, and then we can actually do a typing test on it after I put the keycaps on. So let me go do that now. 
So there it is fully assembled. You can see that it is in the case. We have our USB-C up top so you can charge the nice nano right there. Nice nano in the middle with these standoffs there, which we'll talk about in a second. On the back, we have a bunch of screws to kind of hold it firmly in place. And these are countersunk, so they're kind of in there. So little rubber feet. And then you can also see the battery through there, which I think kind of looks a little bit cool that you can kind of see that right through the transparent PLA because it's only like a millimeter thick there. Now at this point, I'm going to put this down and then I'm going to grab this little plate right here called the 60% bad plate. There's a little joke that I pretty much only like 40% boards, but I'm trying to branch out in 2024 to some bigger things like this. I think it looks pretty cool, but I figured 60% bad would be kind of funny to put right there. So I'm going to pop that on. And then I'm also going to take my, my keycaps here, which are just some purple and white flat caps, which are on the repo if you want to print these. I'm going to put these on and then the build's pretty much done. We'll do a typey test on it and that's what I got. So here's the fully completed board. I think it looks really good with the 60% bad in the middle, the flat keycaps, the color scheme. Everything looks nice on it. If you look here too with the plate, you can see that it's actually perfectly aligned with the keycaps. I kind of did that on CAD so that they perfectly align with the flat caps. But the one thing that's weird is that they are the flat caps and I haven't been using them for a while. So it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve getting used to typing on this again. So we'll see how the typing test goes. But with that, let's go type on it and see how it sounds. So yeah, that's the entire build of the Scato 63. Now, I think it looks really good with the 60% bad joke in the middle, the white on purple keycaps with the pink case here, and then we have the USB-C up top, and then kind of an Easter egg on the back where you can see the battery, which is just a side effect of printing that thin, but it looks pretty cool. Now, the files for this are available for free in the description if you want to build it yourself, as with all my other hand-wired builds, so there are a bunch on there. This is the first video you're seeing from me. But also do join my Discord if you do build this and share some photos with me or if you need help along the way. That's kind of a useful place to be. Um, that's in the description below too. But yeah, I'm losing what I want to say. It's three in the morning. I'm pretty tired. If you enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe as usual, and I'll see you next time.